Okay, everybody. Hey, welcome to another episode of ADHD Express, the podcast. I'm your host, Brian Carlson. And again, with us today, we have Daniel, George, and as always, Joe. Hey. And so uh, you'll notice we got a few new cameras, a few new mics. Um, took us, I don't know, was this a record setup? It was only four hours to get everything working correctly today. Something like Five that. So the fun things that you don't see behind the scenes, but next time it's going to go really so. And we added two new computers as well. So there's a lot of gear Stop going saying on. next time, just say eventually. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. eventually. eventually. Well, I didn't talk about the next time. It might be two next times down the road. I didn't say which next time. Yeah. Okay. That's how you get away with that. You don't say which, right? Clement just leaving it vague. Yeah. You know, funny thing. I don't even know why I'm thinking about this. I just thought it was hysterical. My, I lot my guy Destry moved. He left Carlson inspections and he's off on new adventures in a different state. Uh, we miss him and he turned all of his tools and equipment back in and this company car and all that kind of stuff. And I forgot that when he started, he was scared of dogs. <laughs> and so I got him this little teeny tiny taser and that thing, so you know what uh, like holster wear is, right? You put a gun in a holster for 20 carry, a beat cop, his gun has all got chatter marks all over it. Destry's little pocket taser, it looks like it's been carried in his pocket every day for seven years. Well, because I told him, he's like, what, you want me to tase somebody's dog? And I'm like, absolutely not. I love dogs. Like, don't tase a dog, right? But if a dog is acting aggressive and he's skeeving you out, you pull that thing out and you tase in his general direction and the smell of that, a little electric cur- dogs. I don't care if they are just like, yeah, I don't want anything to do with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you don't ever have to lash out. You don't want to kick nothing. I was like, you just, if they're being that way and they're not just going to calm down, you they'll, they'll stop. It'll calm them down. Calms right them down. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Anyways, it was just funny. Cause I saw it and I was like, look at that. Yeah. I remember when I got him that. <laughs> kind of forgot that he had it but well anyway so hey you guys so today on the podcast um and i still get to use cards because i'm new at this so leave me over so last time we were talking about kind of starting over how to build your life how to engineer it for health and happiness flex uh the new flex is a fit body right george took all of his clothes off if you guys didn't watch that episode <laughs> you should go and see it i think in the background you can see george doing a whole flex thing oh i've so. actually made a special segment oh okay. so <laughs> yeah that's but that's uh, for subscribers only right that's for subscribers <laughs> only <laughs> So, so today we're just going to kind of extend that into some of the stuff that we talk about with like businesses and making money. Some, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to go about things in the world and and you don't have to be a, a solopreneur or an entrepreneur or a, you know, you can honestly live a pretty good life living, working for someone else. You know, I wish I could do that. Could. Something in my brain just won't let me. Oh, sure. That's a thing. Honestly, like, uh, it's so much easier. I think you just have a good job and just. <laughs> it is. There's a lot to keep track of when you're running a business. A lot. In fact, hey, um, this cool book. It reminds me. You guys, these guys are Joe, Joe, George, and uh, Daniel are checking out this book. Will you grab it? It's behind you. Oh yeah, this book is amazing. Yeah, Every business like owner needs to read yeah. this book. So yeah, so this book is pretty cool. We found this thing, uh, tax savvy for small business. Like I'm sure this is not like the authority. But if you haven't started somewhere, this is such a good place to start, you know? um, And honestly, at, at the end of the day, you know, as cool as this is you guys, I, and I think every business owner needs to know a lot of this stuff. Like we pay people to do this stuff for our business, you know? And like, that's where I think a lot of guys, um, we didn't record this and I'm sorry. And I'm hopeful that with me kind of refreshing the topic, Daniel and I this morning, were talking about. You know, there's some, how many, what the business is for sale, man. You were giving me some crazy numbers in the state of Utah, in a country. It's like, so, so currently uh, all the boomers are retiring. They own a majority of the businesses. Um, So actually currently up on the market is 12.2 million businesses. Where? Just in the United States? In the United States. Yeah. Wow. 12 point, how many? 12.2. And they're only expecting. Million businesses for sale. One out of every 12 actually sell. So there's one out of every 12 is actually going to sell. That means that there's probably a lot of creative financing options for people who want to get into a business and don't know how. And what do you mean? What do you mean by creative financing? Well, in this instance, mainly seller financing when the, the, so if you have a business that you're like, man, I've spent 30 years doing this thing. It makes a ton of money. I've got relationships with these clients. I don't really want to leave everybody high and dry, right? I'm ready to retire, move on, do something different. (laughs) And a lot of these guys have, you know, read the too many of these books. And so they're doing their, their taxes, they're doing their bookkeeping, they're doing everything, the marketing, the, this, the, that, 
and it's all functioning, but not super well. Right. And he's the, the, usually that business owner, I don't want to say he, but that's that business owner is usually so, so strung out and busy that they just can't even handle the thought of like, well, yeah, I could start recording myself as I answer the phone and then have somebody transpose it and create a, a training program to train somebody to answer my phones. But most of them are just one more thing. That's like, oh my gosh. One th- it's okay. Do you want me to show you how to mute that? <laughs> you know, it's funny is I actually forgot to mute mine too. So it's going to be really embarrassing when mine goes off and George is going to be like, Hey, do you want me to show you how to mute that? <laughs> <laughs> Which I really hope you say that if my phone rings. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just look at you. Yeah. And you'll think you, it. I did that once I had to speak somewhere. I was for a school thing and, and someone's phone went off and I said that and it got a pretty good response. Everybody got a good chuckle out of it. <laughs> So, You're a funny guy, Brian. Thanks, man. I know, but looks don't count for everything. So, no. um, <laughs> no, anyway, so, so the business thing, right? So you were asking about creative financing and <clears throat> we ADD would everybody sees what that is. The ADHD express. It is what it is. Um, yeah. So creative financing is that seller financing. So a lot of times you're going to want to just, your kids don't want the business. Nobody wants the business, but maybe you find somebody who does. Right. So w- the reason I ask is so like, just to break it down. Right. So instead of just buying the business, like they want 1.2, million for it or whatever, instead of just paying that up front, you would pay them over time. Yeah. That. They are essentially lending you that amount. Like They're fronting as if, you, fronting as if you. they were the yeah. bank. Like they were the bank. Exactly. Yeah. So then that, so then that business with, with their oversight, right? So you would probably negotiate, Hey, let me work for you with you side by side for a year. You show me the dailies will be kind of so that I at least know what's happening. And then and this is all, you kind of have to work all this out legally, you know, LOIs, letter of intents, there's all kinds of contracts and all that stuff that you have to do. But it's all Um, negotiable too. You just have to figure out what works. Right. And so, but then what you do is you would say, Hey, give me this year, whatever, however long you need to learn how to run the business. And then you sign on, like, at least I would, Hey, and then I want access to you for another year. Right. So that way, if in three months after you're gone, I'm like, Oh crap, I don't even know. I, I want you to answer the phone and to show up if I need you to. So that way with the business doesn't tank. And then, so maybe it's, you know, a million dollars you want for the business. Well, maybe now I can pay you $200,000 a year. So now instead of you taking a, a million dollars and having to pay the capital gains and all the taxes on that income, now you're making 200 grand a year for the next, you know, five years. Yeah, that's another thing that makes it really enticing is like a lot of these business owners aren't in like a financial bind. Right. You know? Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. To, to them, it's not about the money. It's like just they, they work so hard into it. They don't want to, you know let it fall just because they can't run it. And so they just keep running it until they're in their seventies and eighties. And then it takes its soul, you know? Well, and another kind of a positive thing about doing it this way is that you as the new owner, like if you're, I don't want to say properly motivated, you're hungry or you're wanting to do the next thing is if you, so that guy already spent all the learning curves of dealing with all this crap to get where he's at. So you're now taking a business that's running and you're just like, well, hey, now I just want to dial this thing in and make it run better. Modernize it. Modernize it. Get somebody, you know, hire some people so that I'm not doing 400 jobs like the old owner was that burned him out and made him tired of it. You know, and so so then hopefully you are going to revolutionize the business, make it even better. It's going to make more money in less time and you're going to spend less time there. If it goes how I would hope it would go that five years that you're supposed to pay that person is 200,000 a year that you might be like, Hey man, we're two years in. Let me just cut you a check and be done with this. Yeah. You know? They have a term for like, that. That's called the balloon payment. It's called a balloon payment. Right. Let me just do a balloon payment. And a lot of times then you can get, so out there's a it. period of time at first where you just kind of making payments on it. And then when things start working out really well, then you just don't. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about it too, is it's so dynamic on what you can do in the deals. Um, you know, like, you can negotiate where it's like they, you pay them 60%, you take 40% or it's a set payment amount or like whatever it may be. And you negotiate something that works for both of you. So there's, there's so many options that you don't get with normal financing that it's like the, the opportunity is there. And with millions of, you know, like well, it's 12, just 11 million options. There's like anything. That. Yeah. It's just crazy to think that like, if you have any business sense at all, like any savvy, it's more doable, more realistic to buy a business that's making money already than it is to buy a starter home. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. And another thing is the average closing on the sale of a business is between four to $600,000, which means 
it's the same as a house, but a lot of these things are cash flowing $200,000 right, profit to the owner. So it's like, you're yeah. going to, you're going to yeah. buy a house or you're going to buy $200 worth of 200,000 in cash flow a year. Like Absolutely. homes are not assets. And I, I no. should also point out that for the folks who are like, well, I don't know anything about business, dude, this is 2024. There is infinite amounts of resources to teach. Business. As As Chad, you teach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and not even that, cause that's a whole nother subject we'll get into, but no, just like being able to be like, okay, type into Google. What are some of the best beginning entrepreneur business owner books to read? But even, even if, I mean, obviously we need to read and educate ourselves, but like if you could just find somebody to pair, pair up with, that's easy. Say, I'll do a hundred percent of the work. I just need somebody to like walk me through the stuff and you get, yeah. you know, whatever percent, like you can learn on the job. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing is, is a lot of these business owners are doing their own accounting, their own, own bookkeeping. Like they're trying to keep up with those things. Mm -hmm. They're cash flowing enough that you can literally turn around and hire somebody to yeah. take care of that. Like a lot of these things they should have outsourced already, but they can be For some outsourced. reason they just haven't. Yeah. Right. And there's enough cash flow in the businesses that it's like, yeah, you know, you could find somebody who can take care of that. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot, I don't know. I know there's, I used to try to do a lot of this, my own stuff. And eventually it just gets to the point when you're, it's just better to outsource it so that you can be focused on what you need to focus on. You know? Yeah. What we're going to talk about next. <laughs> <laughs> so then we can sort of, uh, well, actually, so, and I want to touch on this, but there's actually a guy I really want to have on the show that would really be able to, can I have you? Reiterate that a lot better. Um, he's a real estate broker in the area that, that him and I have talked extensively about this topic. Get rich slow, right? I don't remember, you ever heard of that one? It's what I call, we like to call, Robert Brown and I like to call our get rich slow scheme. And so, um, right, there's a lot of get rich quick schemes that don't work out and you lose everything and this and that and the other thing that happens. Um, the get rich slow scheme what? is almost like, hey, shh. Um, it's almost foolproof, right? And the get rich slow scheme is real estate, right? Buying rentals, right? People, and that's another hard right now, obviously the economy, the insurance or the interest rates and stuff make, have its challenges, but buying real estate is, is still the best way to create what generational wealth, you know, you're, you buy a rental, even if you buy your first home, you go buy a little town home save up, you work, you do all the things, you get a loan, you get a townhome. Most of your mortgages only require you to live there for a year to get owner occupied interest rates. Then you could move out and turn that into your first rental. Right. And I always tell people, this is where the sacrifice comes in. So you got to get that first property bought and then you get right. Your business license, your landlord license, whatever's required in your area. Uh, you get a business that like I said, the business license, you get a business bank account and then you get it rented right? Then the money that your renters pay, go to the business account, which then pays the mortgage. Now here's the hard part is that you've got to find somewhere to live where you're not paying rent. Yeah. Like whether you live in an RV, whether you camp, whether you live on your parents' basement or a friend's couch, however you pull it off, you want to let that thing be rented for a couple of months while you save your mortgage payment every month, right? Now you show your mortgage payment being made and you show a strong cash flow position for yourself. Well, the bank is more than happy to give you another loan. Yeah. Right. And then you live in this one, you get owner, owner occupied interest rates are cheaper. Like I have enough properties that I don't get owner occupied interest rates. I have to use like different investment loans and they cost a little bit more, a little bit higher interest rates, which is fine. You get there, but you kind of have to be willing. So you could do that four times. The bank is super happy to give you four loans. All right, everybody, I have to pause for two minutes and let Tommy out. He's, he's going to come. Tommy, 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 we we've talked, we're going to install a doggy door for Tommy so he can come and go at his leisure. But, um, yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, give it slow, man. Yeah. And another thing on that, like with the, the refinancing, when you refinance, that's tax free. It's because it's debt, it's untaxable. So. Yeah. So when you wait, just wait long enough to own those interest rates, you know, we've been doing real estate stuff for a long time. And most people tell you, man, you kind of five years really is makes a big difference on real estate. You know, what may have not seemed like a good deal today in five years is a screaming deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like some people are like, gosh, I paid at the high. Yeah. But in five years, it really won't matter because it'll have stabilized. And that's probably just where the market's going to be. Yeah. You know, so like the worst thing you could do is sell when it's, you know, um, 
you're at a low spot, which I know some people get job transfers or stuff. Life happens and you have to, and I'm not, I don't have advice as far as that stuff goes, but, um, as far as the houses go, that is a great way to accumulate wealth. Now I personally prefer multifamily. I don't like single family rentals anymore. I don't even like a duplex or a fourplex. So I like 12 doors or bigger. Yeah. Just the cash flow. Like, if well, you, if you have a duplex and you get one apartment, that's not rented. That's, that's half your, that's anyway. half. Right. And so it just, it gets kind of, but whereas like when I had it, my, my first multi, well, I've had duplexes mostly, but then I had a 12 plex and that was when I bought that 12 plex, that was the best one. Cause man, you could have two units empty and you really hardly even noticed, Yeah, you know? And so, um, it was just kind of a lot better. And then also, you know, the biggest part of it is for all the people who are kind of curious about this. <clears throat> yeah, dude, being a landlord can suck. Like every once in a while you get really awesome people, but guess what the alternative to that is? Every once in a while you get really horrible people. And right now, like the hardest thing I think to deal with as a landlord, and I don't know about other states, but in Utah is the ESA people, the emotional support animals. So the people who are like kind of like upstanding members of society who have something happen or whatever, and they have to have some sort of a therapy animal they're usually really okay with it and they'll find an apartment that allows pets and they'll pay the pet deposit and they'll just deal with it. And then you get another class of, of person who is kind of a slovenly kind of nasty people. Their house is very dirty. They don't have any problems trashing a nice apartment and bringing in their animals and they'll sneak them in. And then when you catch them, they go online and get that bullshit letter that says, Oh no, these three dogs are our ESA animals. We have to have them. And they're completely untrained, just monsters that, trash out a yard, trash out a house. So now you just lost all profits until you can get those people out, you know? And so that's what I've learned is like, there's just some of those people who are out there, you know? And so, um, in fact, I've got one right now that we can't wait to get rid of, you know, we'll have to go in and renovate the apartment again and probably put in more grass seed a second time, <laughs> you know, because that's how bad they just destroy stuff in a year. It doesn't take them any time at all. They just destroy stuff. And that's so, another well, thing I know is- you're sorry. Go ahead. You're not going to get much sympathy from people on this. Oh no, I know. Right. The landlord (laughs) is the most evil guy in the world, but it's just like, yeah, well, and it's fine. Like, again, I'm one more that won't be, you know, that'll be one more that I, you know, we try to be reasonable and try to work things out, but I'm just going to sell those properties off and we'll stick with the big ones because it's easier. Yeah, no, I know you don't. It's kind of funny, but then you get like, they don't see it. Like, you know, they're like, oh, you're all just greedy. No, you're not. Like I own it to own, to make money. Like that's the whole purpose of this. And all it takes is one person like that. And I literally five years didn't make any money. Right. Well, we don't just deserve shelter. It is a basic necessity. But we don't <clears throat> right. just deserve it. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. You got to earn that shit. You got to earn it. Yeah. And another thing is, is like from the business and the real estate, like it's not easy, but it's worth it. Right. Well, nothing's easy. Dude. In fact, that's honestly, I talk about that all the time, right? You have to pick your, you have to pick your hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. George and I are both sitting here. George is limping around because his legs hurt because he worked out too hard. <clears throat> I'm over here having a hard time reaching for stuff because I worked out my upper body and my arms hurt. <laughs> right. And so it's hard to be fit. Right. And then you look at people who are, you know, obscenely overweight or even just moderately overweight. And like, you look at how hard their life is, you know, and how hard it is for them just to move around. Shoot. They've dropped something on the ground. Like it's a little hard for them to get it. That's hard. Right. Right. You kind of have to pick your heart. It's hard to make money and it's hard to live without money. It's hard to be poor. So like, it's all hard. And yeah, I, I do sort of feel like just like everything being so easy and convenient. It's kind of taught us to just think that life isn't supposed to be difficult. Yeah. You know, a little bit, just all of us. We're just a little softer. Agreed. So yeah, that would be a thing. Okay. Well, so yeah, on that note <laughs> that we try to keep it more positive. We were all going down a little bit of the bad path. Or something. What do you guys was it a bad path? Yeah. I don't know. A little truthful, I guess. Huh? Actually, you know aren't what? That is true. Be, aren't we supposed it's to be real, genuine? Yeah. That's what we're and doing. Real. Yeah. There's no such thing as a bad path. There's just something that we haven't understood yet. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Perspective. So yeah, never mind. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't want to get canceled. I know, right? I can already tell that smile. No, that's okay. We're still too small to get canceled. You have to, <laughs> yeah. you have to make it somewhere first. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things, um, you know, we were talking about last week and we never made it onto the show with, we were talking about it was some of the tax hacks and tax breaks that are out there for these business owners. 
there's a law. Well, it's not okay. I said that wrong. I led into that totally terribly. Um, the like registering your business in Wyoming or Nevada or Utah, right? And there's some different tax advantages to doing that. Yeah, like I mean, the like filing a corporation in Wyoming is going to get you. I think it's now at twenty two percent overall tax rate. Um, not a hundred percent on that, but. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's way less taxes. They don't charge state taxes in Wyoming. So you get around, like get away from the state taxes and all you're doing is paying 150 bucks to have somebody put a file in a folder. Right. Like, you know, there's probably little offices that do that. A registered know. agent. If you need to file a business, go to a registered agent site, file your business, 150 bucks, a couple hours. That is the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, there's just, and this is, this was you, you just doing some simple research online, right? Yeah. Stuff's out there for everybody. And you can operate out of state. Obviously you don't have to operate in the in state. 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 Sure. Uh, registered under, but sure. There's all kinds of corporations that are like that. There's just a lot to business that, which is probably why a lot of people don't get into it, but you know, it's not for everybody. Right. Yeah. It's hard. That's why I say like, I wish I really wish I could just be happy with a job. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Uh, a total life business. You just, you inspired me to think of this, this, and actually even have a, well, you're welcome it. business hack. Okay. So a simple business hack that I learned in BNI and BNI is another business hack that we'll talk about. Totally. This is perfect. I love this segue. So George, show your hand to the camera. So George is a fabricator, owns his own fabrication business. I don't know that they'll be able to see, but I had an accident, laid myself, sliced his hand open pretty bad, almost had stitched now. up for several weeks. Um, there are things called an accident policy. Do you have an accident policy? Uh, no. So an accident policy pays you, not the hospital. It's just like insurance, but it's insurance for yourself because while insurance is important to pay your bills, right? Like the bill at the hospital. What about the bill that you have to pay because you missed work? Right? So the accident policy pays you. I've got a friend of mine. Um, he owns this company called the Bullock agency and they are a broker for some of these different accident policies. And he's able to match you up with, the best policy that pays you. Now, these policies can be awesome. Um, we have, have them, we offer them to our employees and we pay, it's like 25, 35 bucks a month to offer that for your employee. If he gets cancer, it pays him like 25 grand. Like it's all kinds of stuff, you know, there's, and then he can also piggyback off of our policy and put his family on there for cheaper than he would be able to get his own policy for. So this says that if you get hurt, right, you go in there and you, this just, it helps pay you, right? So we, <laughs> we both had a home inspection get canceled and we took my Jeep up to the Canyon here and went doing some serious rock crawling. Well, we broke a drive line, lost uh, a rear brake line <clears throat> in the, in the process of parts being broken. Um, somehow we lost our brakes, all the brake. And so we're on the side of a cliff, very steep. And as we started rolling backwards, um, I still had it in drive and was trying to use the gas in the front drive line front tires to slow us down, but it was so rocky. We were kind of bouncing and I hit the emergency brake and it endoed my Jeep and we went over backwards. <laughs> That's how oh. steep it was. <laughs> yeah. It was a really, really crappy experience. So we endoed <laughs> backwards. We rolled like six times. Um, I was somehow lucky and pretty much unscathed and Destry had some cuts and a fractured vertebrae in his neck. And um, we were so far out in the middle of nowhere. We had to walk out. And then again, it's just kind of how things are comical we have no cell reception. So we're walking out bleeding dirty, right? We got a dog with us. He fortunately jumped out the window of the car and didn't get hurt. Um, but I, my phone rings and it's this woman who has a real estate license looking for a home inspection. And so I'm like, and, and I know she's a friend of mine. Um, she's since moved out of state, but, um, I was, uh, Oh my God. And I totally just forgot her name. I'll have to remember that in a minute, but that's why we're supposed to get the alpha brain. So <laughs> don't forget people's names. But, um, yeah. She was like, I'm like, yeah, Hey, I'll totally do your inspection. But listen, I just got in a car accident. I rolled my Jeep. I'm like, I need help. And she was like, Oh my God, where are you? And I told her where I was. And she was like, how am I going to find you? I'm like, well, you're not going to make it to where we are. So we're just going to be walking. I says, when you find two bloody dirty guys walking down the middle of the road, that's us, <laughs> you know? And she's like, Oh my gosh. So anyway, so then, you know, as we start walking, we lose reception again and we just keep walking and walking and walking. And, and then up comes this little, two door black sports car with black leather interior low to the ground. She's driving like a mile an hour up this dirt, dusty, nasty dirt road. Felt so bad. <laughs> we had to jump in. We were filthy. Like we have a dog. It was awesome, but she came and got us. 
<laughs> and we drove home. But anyway, so the whole point of that was the accident policy. So I was like, well, we were so far off road. Auto insurance isn't really going to cover it. Um, we were kind of in a, uh, and then my Jeep was like marked for the company. So we're kind of in a company vehicle. We're literally in uniforms. Like it's like, well, we could do workers comp. Um, I says, but I have this accident policy for you. I'm like, let me pay for your initial doctor's visit. And then let's just run everything through this accident policy. He made money. Destry. Co- yep. Yep. Covered all of his medical oh. bills. And then he ended up pocketing a little bit of money at the end of it. Yeah. And that's just, that, I just didn't know about it. Just did 25 bucks a month as the business owner. And I put it on all my employees and I, and I encourage them. And then you start like, Brett will teach you, you know, you can go and do a wellness check. Right. And so you go and do a wellness check. You go, go find a healthcare provider who will take your blood. They'll check your pulse, your heart rate, all kinds of stuff like that. Make sure that your parameters are healthy. And the the accident policy actually pays you for that. And it's almost covers your premiums for the year. Uh, and um, anything you spend on it as a business is a hundred percent deductible. Yeah. So we provide that policy and then we make our employees go and get that wellness check and then we let them, and then they're like, oh, so you want that check, right? And we're like, no, man, that's just a perk for you, <laughs> right? Like, who's who's whose employers doing that for them? Only the ones who want to keep their people. So that's anyway. So for for a guy like you who's running your own business, dude, get an accident policy. You're totally covered. It's yep. cheap. So I'll set you up with Brett. In fact, we'll probably one day get Brett on here. I'm gonna send this link, this video to him when we get this one launched. I'll make sure to CC Brett so he can see it but he's been awesome to teach me this stuff. Kind of taught me how the ins and outs of it. Great agent. So he's an insurance agent. That's what he does. So accident awesome. policy for your employees. Yeah. Well, you could have told me a month ago. I could have, but I didn't know you. <laughs> <laughs> we were new. I met you. You had stitches. Is that right? Yep. No, no, that's right. It was, it was I met after. you. And then it was like that weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. The second time we, we the second yeah. time we met, you had stitches. Yeah. So Dang there's it. bad timing on my part. There's also another one that might actually really help you as well. So have you ever heard of Christian healthcare ministries? Yes. My parents have it. Oh, cool. So then, yeah, so that, and we use that as well. And like that one is still, you know, you have to, you know, they send somebody out and give you like a physical or whatever. Come on, Tommy. All right, everybody, there's Tommy. We'll get a Tommy cam in here one of these days and let it walk around with him so you can see what Tommy sees, but. Um, just check in with him. So yeah, just check in with Tommy's he's doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, so um, the Christian Healthcare Ministries is one you end up paying for your medical stuff up front, but then they'll reimburse you if it fits within the criteria of their stuff, you know. And you have to live a pretty clean lifestyle. I believe that there's like a physical involved, um, you know, where they make sure you're not, you know, overweight or insanely unhealthy, smoking all that stuff. So, so it does require, you know, a certain lifestyle to be able to qualify for that. But for an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, that is a great way to get yourself some coverage. It can save you a lot of headache. Yeah. I had uh, four hernias fixed last year and they covered almost all of it. I think there was about 1500 bucks that I ended up paying out of pocket for like $25,000 surgery. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. That's money in the bank. Yeah. So yeah, I wish I would have known about this. <laughs> so, and that's why we want to talk about it. We're trying to help people show them how to live a better style type of lifestyle. Maybe not better or different. I don't want to say better. I'm not better than anybody. I just, there's a different way to do things. Someone else might know better, but this is the best you've learned so this far. This is the best that I have learned so far. And it seems like when I, and again, I know comparison is a thief to joy, but it seems like we're not doing too horrible. So hopefully people like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's all we can hope for. Honestly. That's all we can hope Speaking for. Speaking of which, don't forget to subscribe. Get yeah, subscribe, button. like, subscribe, comment. Actually, please comment. Whoever, okay, so if you I don't even know the name, it. that person who made the comment about this scratched my ADD itch. It's like <laughs> listening to different types of music. I thought that I don't know who that was. I don't know if it's somebody in the network. I really hope and pray that it was a stranger that felt that way. But if it wasn't, if it was somebody in the group, you're awesome too. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> The struggle is real. I'll pull out their names and shout them out. That's, That's true. true. Dude, yeah, we can do that. Thank you. We can even cast it. Do you know you guys know that he set this up? I can cast that computer up to that TV. 
It's so we cool. We can play things now. So you guys were turning my old wood shop. Okay. And in fact, hey, can I just, we're going to talk a little bit about the wood shop just for two minutes. So, so this is a literally a 120 year old building that is in my backyard of my house. Uh, this building used to have a four foot wall on this north side. It was a slope shed roof. It was, the foundation was falling apart. Um, the electrical should have burned it down many years ago, but for some reason it held together. <laughs> <laughs> and so we gutted it. We demolished half of the building, more than half of the building. I had to replace footing and foundation on one side. Um, we recycled some trusses and rebuilt this thing. So the wall behind Daniel is the last bit of the 120 year old building that was here. So I didn't rebuild any of that. And that, that desk was, too, right? Yeah. That, well, that was here when I bought it. It's been 15 years. So right. who knows how old that was, but that was the original guy that owned this building. But yeah, it's actually never even been moved. I don't even know what's behind it. There could be yeah. stuff behind it. There are actually some pretty cool old buildings around here. Yeah. From like uh, grain silos. Yeah. I didn't know what those were at first, but they're super solid. They're made of yeah. like two by sixes just stacked on top of each yeah. other. There's all kinds of that neat. Well, I mean, it's, and it's not that old. The area is not that old, but 120 years is still a long time for a building yeah. to be hanging out. And so. Which is kind of cool, you know? Every once in a while, you're driving around the neighborhood and there's a. 120 year old building yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. Super cool. I think. Yeah. yeah. And actually we haven't, there's still another one, not 30 feet away <laughs> yeah. that we haven't rebuilt yet. The bank in, in Hiram. Is yeah. Is a, used to be a grain. Well, spot. yeah. You know where they moved it from? Oh, did they, they moved move it from like yeah. 200 West in they Hiram? They put it on a truck and shut all the streets down so they could transport yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Was it 200 West? Is that right? About there? I don't remember where it came from. I just remember they shut everything down. Yeah. I, I, I do know. Cause I drove by it all the time because I was, I'm doing home inspections in these neighborhoods. And I remember always thinking that was so cool. And then I remember when they were moving it and I was like, no way. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. So anyways, if you guys are curious, it's the, I don't even know what bank it Cash is. Cash Valley but Bank. Cash Valley Bank in Hiram, Utah. That was a grain silo -y type of thing that somebody built by flat stacking two by fours and just nailing them together 30 feet in the air. Yeah. They're <laughs> very sturdy looking. Couldn't do that nowadays. Lumber's too lumber expensive. Prices. You'd have to repurpose Shell. stuff. Although Shell is to Dima. Okay. Nice. Thank you for saying that. Dima W what? Yeah. Something. D60. <laughs> WD60. I don't know what that is. Something Dana 60. It's an off-roader. It might be the default one. Maybe it wasn't. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nah, it's, it's a hope, username. Hopefully it's somebody who drives a really cool off-roader with Dana 60s and 40s. For those but people, if you're not, we still it's love okay. you. We still love you. And if you don't know what I just said, don't worry. We're going to have a video on that and you will learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we start working on some of these projects soon. I can't wait. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, we we're kind of trying to set this property up, you guys. We got some new land, and we're gonna build a new shop this this spring, and hopefully get to get busy on some really cool projects for you guys to watch. Jeeps and off road stuff, Jeeps, and the just bus, kind of crazy stuff. Forty seven Ford, sixty nine Impala. Um, there's like nine Jeeps. There's a fifty five Jeep CJ five, sixty five CJ five, a couple eighty eight MJs. Most people don't even know what it is. Still can't believe you got that Impala. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really though. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. Elaborate. Oh, okay, so you guys know this guy. Uh, like before we even met him, we had a neighbor that lived next door that had a '68 Chevy Impala, and it was beautiful, and we loved it, and things were just super amazing with it, and we always like were in awe of it, and then. It disappeared one day. <laughs> the defense was taken down, and then it was pulled out of this little. I'd like to uh, mention that there was like four trees that were cut down and moved out too. Yeah, <laughs> and it was buried. There was, in there three was a lot of pine cones. There was a lot of work to get that car out of there. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, when we started working with him, he, he's like, "We have to, yeah, we have this Impala." Like, Wait, did you get it? Did you get it from here? Yeah, that was really funny. It we tried for years, like two years, to convince them to sell that car to us, and they wouldn't. Nope. Mm. Like they were gonna keep it, they were gonna restore it, and all that. And then when it disappeared, we were like, "Oh, yeah." They sold the house, so that's how the story goes. The new buyers hired me to do a home inspection, and I was like asking about it because it was like they had double fenced the car in, 
so that you couldn't even see it from the backyard. Yeah. It was like this little alley they created so that they couldn't tell the car was there, <laughs> which yeah. was kind of interesting. And it had just grown around it. I have some, I have pictures of it. I don't think I have video. Yeah. It only has like 15,000 miles. Right. On it. 68 like, and Paul, 15 grand mint can do. Well, it's been some squirrels got in there and yeah. made a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. It runs. Do you know it runs and dry? It runs. Yeah. We got it, it to run already. So it's been sitting for over what? 50 years or longer. I don't even know how long it's been sitting Yeah, forever, but a long time. So anyway, so yeah, so I get hired and they're like, well, there's this, this car, right? We're thinking we're just going to, cause it's all grown in. There's trees. We don't even know how to get it out. We're just going to leave it as yard art. And I was like, dang. I was like, well, if I get it out of there, could I have it? And they were like, well, yeah, for sure. And I was like, sweet. And so I don't know, for those of you who don't know me that well, I'm a little on the tenacious side and <laughs> there's, there is no way in hell that that car was not coming out of there. <laughs> in fact, when we hooked it up, it's actually kind of funny. So, uh, Jared Headley, one of the guys, again, I'm sure we'll get him on the show. Friend of mine, he's got this half ton Chevy truck lifted up with big tires. It's a Utah thing. We all like a big lifted up truck. And, uh, he's in there oh, trying to pull on it and then boom, it snaps the strap. That car was so stuck and frozen in the ground. So then we hook up a chain and he's just burning all four tires and four low and it just won't budge it. So then we go and get my one ton, my big old one ton diesel. And I had to pop that sucker out of there, man. I had to hit it. Like I chirp tires on my one ton diesel. <laughs> and so, but we bought, we got it to pull out and we just pulled it up on the trailer and yeah, that'll yeah, that be extra weight and torque makes a big difference. Yep. So now is a good time for you guys. Um, I just want to mention um, the ADHD. No, ADHD Auto is uh, is another. Is my son's channel, ADHD Auto on YouTube, and he is um, he's actually got content right now. He's building an engine for a Ford Ranger, kind of going through all the rebuild, boring it out, full assembly. We've got that video. He's done a lot of other fun projects. He's got a G- couple of Jeeps himself, and anyways, they've already got that Impala running. And so as soon as it warms up and dries up around here, the Impala is going to come. From the junkyard, I have a junkyard. We've got some footage of that as well. But um, the junkyard, will come, it'll come, the Impala will come from the junkyard to the house and it will become a daily driver this summer by the 4th of July, the Cache Valley Cruise Inn. So actually, which is another good thing, the Cache Valley Cruise Inn is really going to be the, I think the big official launch of the ADHD Express on YouTube. Because... Well, yeah, so we, we were going to do the King of the Hammers thing and it's just not working out. We're too early. It's kind of premature, but that gives us, we're at just shy of four months. No, five months, July. Okay. Fourth of July is five months, right? Should be able to have a couple things done by then. Right. So then we have stuff that we'll show up with at the Cash Valley Cruise Inn and then, then we're doing the pig cook giveaway. So we are going to cook a 160 pound pig at the car show at the cash Valley cruise in 2024. And we are giving away free food all day until it's run out to all you got to do is come up. We'll have a QR code. You just scan it, follow and like the channel or show that you've already done that. And I'll feed you. And we're going to kind of bypass all the health department nonsense. Cause you're all my friends. I'm just giving food to my homie. Oh, having a picnic. Brilliant. Right. We're going to give away. I feel, some- yeah. We're going to have shirts and hats by then. We'll have some cool stuff, hopefully. And gosh, I sure hope we have at least one or two of our cool vehicles done. Yeah. 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 We got all these cool things we're putting together. And it just, when you're working on 15 different things and starting a business, it just is tough. That's what we do. Yeah. We do one we thing do. at a time. You know, and we are even working on in the background. And I'm only going to give you guys a tiniest of teasers about this. You guys all know. You're all oh, looking yeah. at me. Wait, what is Brian going to say? You know. Yeah. We we got hooked up with somebody who's very special. He's a little bit of a superstar, kind of, I don't know if world renowned is it, but he's a very big name in in, uh, in his field. And uh, he has actually approached us, our marketing company, Dreamline. Um, he's approached us about helping to take his business to the next level. Um, and I've actually interviewed with him as a business manager type of a position. And I think it's going to go through. And so I'm going to wait until all that is done before we talk about it. But once that's all done, um, it's going to open up a whole new realm for everybody. It's going to, we're going to show you how we take an underperforming business from a solopreneur and turn it into a huge corporation that is killing it. So everything we're talking about doing, we are doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited (laughs) for that project. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, like what kind of a gun I could have bought with all these road and Yetis and computers and lights and shit that we bought. Oh, but you sound so good. <laughs> I know, dude. I love it. Dude, the buttery voice. Listen to the buttery, silky sound of my voice through a Yeti blue <laughs> mic. Yeti, I want a sponsor. I bought a lot of these things. <laughs> <laughs> so did a lot of people, I'm sure. Good stuff. But they're not us. That's true. So, no, can't compete. You know, can't compete. Man, what a fun day. I'll tell you cards. My cards? You got I know, cards huh? there. I did. I thought Joe was going to say something. Um, hang on. We moved through a lot of those. Tax deductions in Wyoming, the accident policy, right? What is another business hack that I should talk about? Oh, there's so many. There's, there's so, so many. many. Right? AI. You know oh, what? Actually. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm so sorry. These guys are the Climbing biggest nerds for AI. Hole. But I say that with love and respect because I myself am a big giant nerd about many things. And so um, nerds are awesome. Nerds should rule the world. Um, actually, I think they kind of do. Yeah. And, yeah. Elon considers himself a nerd. Oh, he does. Yeah. Did you read the book? Did you read his? I did not. I kind of lost me on the, when he left his wife, that whole thing was kind of like, that was hard for me to process. Cause yeah. she was like, you know, the whole living on Mars or whatever he said. And she's like, yeah, I can't see doing that. And he was like, well, there's not really any purpose for us to stay together. <laughs> which everything is purely analytical. Right. And that's, I'm sure it's his personality type, the way he's coded. Oh, it's so yeah. crazy. Cause like that, the book, like it literally, the guy was sitting across from him. He just scarfed his food down as fast as he could so that he could start the conversation. Oh, like yeah. he does everything in order to make it so that things can be optimized and perfect. Hey, I think you have a line you're supposed to say. Yeah. You have a line uh, you're supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually one of the guys that we're going to be on. He's an inventor who's got 60 p- inventions patented. and What has he invented? Uh, all kinds of stuff. Oh, Are really? you familiar with EK accessories? So if you go to a gas station, most places in the country, and they have these neat little things with like paracord and a rubber doodad that you can hook your keys on and stuff like that, he pretty much invented all of those. Amongst a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> a bunch of the different versions of like straps that you tie stuff down on your car with, he invented. Like, you remember how it used to be like there's not really good options and then all of a sudden there's like options? Yeah. 30 years ago? Yeah, 30 there years you go. ago. Yeah, was there you go. He invented all that stuff. Born. Yeah, dude, he just, he was a, he told me himself, he was like, I was a ski bum. He goes, just living the, the wild lifestyle, having a great time. And he goes, I got in my th- early thirties and he was like, man, I probably ought to do something with myself. And yeah, that sounds familiar. He, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Except I'm not, I'm almost, almost 30. So. Yeah. So he just, yeah, he just, and then he did something bigger than most of us can even dream about doing. And now he's this awesome guy. He's super fun to talk to. He's, I mean, again, I'm sure there's people have different expect to me. He's awesome. I think the guy is great. So I, I hope he'll come on. He said he would, but you know, it's one thing to say you will. And then to come and sit here and talk, but, but, um, dude, I can't believe I did that. AI needs so, okay. So episode. we were talking about AI and how that's going to help you business owners. Okay, so I don't know. No, if, it came out eight days ago. That is wild. So their AI, the generic AI platforms, chat GPT has been out and people have been having a ball with it. In fact, I, you guys, Full disclosure, I was having, there was one of the chapters in my book, um, chapter six, that I was really kind of struggling with, maybe seven. I think it was chapter six. Um, Smoke and mirrors is what it's called. (laughs) And so it was about, the chapter six of the book is about, um, we had the opportunity to go to one of those big trade shows in Vegas. And like, this is the trade show for like smoke shops and marijuana growers. And so we had a whole big old, like a kind of a city block, I guess you would call it. Um, Cause they, well, if those of you who go to a lot of trade shows, they lay them out like a, a grid system, like a city. And so we just got a whole corner, like almost like a block. And we put backdrop on two sides. So we had two sides of the intersection and we had the spice stuff there. We had some, some bikini models and bikinis with posters and the product names and the girls were, you know, signing <laughs> posters. And we had, we had uh glass bowls with spice and some, you know, throw away glass pipes and matches, right. With our phone number on them. And, and people were coming through and we're just, yeah, pack your bowl, man, here, take a hit, right? Like, <laughs> and so we, we crushed it at that show, but it was kind of a hard, 
kind of a hard chapter, right? Like it was weird because of what we were doing there and like what was going on. And so I just kind of plugged in what I had and was like, Hey, I need something better. And I kind of described it all to the chat and it, dude, it kicked me out of chapter that I was like, dude, that's awesome. And so I totally used it. So chapter six, chat GPT totally helped me write. <laughs> but anyway, so that was the generic original version of it. Now, Joe has been, uh, Daniel and Joe have all been all going nuts about this eight days ago. What? Tell me what happened eight days ago, okay, fellas. So chat GPT last month announced the app store for GPTs where people can create their own custom GPTs for specific niches and things, which is absolutely insane. And they've announced revenue share. So it's going to blow up just like when Apple first created the app store. It's going to blow up the same way that Android, like just a phone regularly when you got an app. Or when the World Wide Web came out, there were these people that were early yeah, engineers right. and early pioneers that made crap tons of money. Crap tons. And then it was kind of held back to most of the public because only people that knew how to code were there. But now they've introduced the ability to just tell it who it is and give it certain skills. And then the AI, the AI generator, generator yeah. the, the GPT, as they call it. You're able to create a GPT that it believes that it's this thing and this person and it's its sole thing. Kind of like the Rick and Morty. In Rick and Morty, there's a little butter robot that looks up at the person and he's like, what is my purpose? And Rick's like, you just passed the butter. Like, it's the same concept. You just tell it what to do. And what's amazing is they've created these networks now where you can create multiple instances of Jack, chat GPT and create multiple people or multiple beings and then be able to swap and uh, well, be able to tie them together and complete complex, insanely amazing things for you right there instantly just by calling an API or just by calling these things. And you don't even have to learn a bunch. You just write a sentence yeah. and do it over and over. And it's insane. The capabilities are endless. It is also the scariest thing that's coming out this year. But yeah. So it's business ball ball quick. It is. So business owners, you're trying to come up with that perfect slogan for your website or for your brochure or something like that, man, take what you got. Talk to this J A I generator. And that's the tip of the iceberg. That is the tip of the, iceberg. the tip yeah. of the tip tip of the tip. Yeah. And kind of the new stuff is they made it so that you can have different agents. And what that means is you can almost create critical thinking inside of the AI. So if you have, you know, three different agents that are all one makes an input of some kind and then sends it out to them and then they work out what the best option to output is. So instead of it just being kind of a straightforward process, it's like they're proofreading and checking each other. You know, and you can build that out, like imagine that, but thousands of them. And when it compiles it together, it's just like, oh man, it, yeah. it's mind blowing. It's ultimate. It's so scary because like it's hours away from the wrong person totally destroying something. Like just someone spending a few hours in order to figure it out. But I don't know. I think that it's going to be way more of a benefit than it's going to be. A Hope, so. Hope so. Hope so. I feel people naturally just want to do the best things. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a way of belief. But like, is, is, I there, is there a skeptic in the room? The <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I, I agree. I think most people are good. That's been my experience. But it, does, it doesn't, it only takes one bad apple to spoil the basket of apples. Yeah. And where it's so easy to use and can be put together, I mean, it makes itself. Like you literally ask one of them to build you a program that automates YouTube posting and can log into your YouTube channel, grab the analytics on it, and then automatically upload a video with the taglines that are estimated to perform best or something something like that. And I mean, it, it'll go make all of the agents and the things that need to run through that process. So it, it's yeah. literally making itself. And there's GPTs that... Literally, you can tell it to make a bunch of GPTs and all of the code you need to just plug it in. Yeah. And then it is self-replicating. And self so why don't you guys talk about a little bit about this? Because there's, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people who are like, okay, I understand 
the concept of what you're saying, but like, how does it even work? You know, like, well, and again, it's a, it's ma- a limited language. Model. Right. Hang on. Let me, let me dumb this down even further. I'm sorry. I, I am looking for the layest terms. So I'm going to actually going to offer this if I can. Oh, so I think that might actually help out. So, so the latest terms I could come up with to explain how this, and I'm just going to stick with chat GPT because that's the one that I've used so far. Right. You literally are going to go in and create this thing. And as you input what you want to say, Hey, I'm this person. This is what I like. This is what I do. This is, I don't know. You give as much information as you can. I need a story about this, or I need a letter about this. I need a a love letter to my wife. I missed our anniversary. We've been married for 25, you know, whatever. So romantic. Huh? So romantic. (laughs) Hey, some of us, some of them need help, man. Like, you know what? So, okay, get this. When I was learning to archery hunt, right? So I'm as a home inspector, one of the tools that I use all the time is an infrared camera, thermal imaging camera. Well, I tried this little small one and it doesn't really work good for home inspections. But you know what it works really great for? Hunting applications. Tracking an animal, animal particularly archery. If you hit cuz a lot of guys will tell you you, know, you hit an animal with a bow and they run, right? You have to track them. And so um liquids cool cooler than the ambient air around them and so it's really easy to track with an infrared camera. And I was telling my dad this discovery and he says, "Well, that's not very sportsmanlike." And he says the native, cause he was like, he liked the idea of hunting using a bow and arrow, but you know, cause that's more uh, whatever it's still, especially with like the modern compounds and bows and arrows. I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> it's still not sporting Yeah, <laughs> modern camouflage, like scent blockers, cover yourself tree in deer stand, urine or yeah. tree stands. Right. But, um, so no, anyway, so no, it's just to make sure you don't lose an animal really. Like it's trying to be a responsible hunter. If I hit it, I want to make sure that thing is not suffering and you get it right. Um, and so, and he was like, well, the Indians didn't use those. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. The native Americans, whatever. I know we're not supposed to call them Indians feathered, not dot. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm so worried. I'm trying to be sensitive to stuff like that. Cause people, cause you know, it's really hard. Here's the deal. The, the PC terms of my childhood are now cruel and hate speech. Just like when it's like when I was a kid, my grandmother would refer to anyone who was like handicapped as a mongoloid. Or some crap like that, right? <laughs> and so when I was a kid, the word, the R word was like p- politically correct. That was the kind thing to retur- refer to them as. And now it's some hate speech. And so the thing that is, it's really funny is all of these like the liberal people who are like, oh, that's hate speech. That's your correct vernacular is going to be your children's or your grandchildren's hate speech. Just so that you know. So we're, because that's how the generations go. <laughs> so you guys can be mean to us all you want. But anyways, it is what it is. Anyway, so, but we're saying is, you know, that the, my dad says the Indian, the Native Americans wouldn't have used those. And I was like, well, yeah, but the only reason they wouldn't have used them is because they didn't have them. Yeah. Like yeah. they used the tools that they had. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, use the tools that you have. In fact, uh, we were talking about AI. You were telling me about a video where a guy just had to look at his YouTube videos. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Had to go through his YouTube videos that he's already posted and just go through all the information. And then he tested it against himself, asked it certain questions, and then answered them like first before it gave the answer. And eight out of ten uh, questions that he asked it, it answered correctly, wow. like the so same it as was, he. It was mimicking he him, yeah, mm-hmm. based off of his YouTube right. video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody talks about it now. Like there was, I don't, yeah, they talk about people with these amazing internet platforms and their AI. <laughs> Like it's already happening. Now it's open source. Now open source open. AI. Yeah. Now it's everyone has access to it, but everyone. it's about who's willing to learn. Right. We are. I want to learn. I think it's, it's awesome. awesome. Oh, dude, it'll take two hours to install. Yeah. Not even actually. It's like five lines of typing, and you're done. And you have access. Cool. Well, we should set that up later today. You know, and that's. Gosh, you guys, one of the things, this an ADD, I'm so sorry, but as I sit here and look at all the stuff running, you have no idea the amount of stuff that I have had to learn that George has had to learn to do this. There are, I don't even know, five different things running on my computer to help me run audio and cameras and we're syncing everything together. And there's four laptops in this room running uh, one, two, three, four, five cameras and one, two, three, four microphones. (laughs) And so as we talk about all the business stuff, like it's fun. Find something that you're interested in. There's so many different cool things to get interested in as far as the business goes. And you don't even, as we just learned, you don't even have to start the business from scratch anymore. 
You just oh, yeah. got to get on there and find one of those 12 million businesses for sale that you like. Make, I don't know, stop by with some bagels or, you know. <laughs> I recommend right. personally, and I'm no expert, but I recommend not starting a business. Just for the sheer scope of businesses that are already out there. Yeah. well, Like it really just makes more sense to buy one. And they're so well established, you know, like a lot of these things have been open for longer than 10 years. They're right. past that threshold of statistically failing. Yep. You know, these are businesses that have been and will be. Yep. So I'm, and they're going for cheap or how many of those businesses do you think the owner has downloaded the Google, my business app, the, my business, app um, maybe like 8%. <laughs> eight, did you say eight? Eight. Yeah. Very specific number. There is I some would say 8% just because the sheer amount, like I every time I meet somebody, they don't even know what that is. And I'm like, how is this possible? How do you not well, yeah, know? Google will automatically generate. Oh, I know they do. But they won't. Unless you ask it, it to. Right. No, it's automatic. It's already there. It already exists for you. So for those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, Google, like there's kind of like the phone book. Google has a phone book for you. They have a Google, my, a my business page for your business. If your business exists in the universe, there is a Google biz, a page for it. And it just has the basics, the phone number, maybe a website if you have it. They have the bare minimums. You can download the app, My Business. It's a blue little box. I don't have my phone or I'd show it to you. They've actually um, switched it. It's in Google Maps now. Oh, is it in Google yep. Maps? Oh, that's right. It does sync through Google Maps. But yep. yeah, so Google My Business. You go claim your business and there's a process to do that. But now you can do a bot. You can start putting in all the information. And it's honestly like those are some of the simplest things that you can do to get your business more visible online. And none of these pe people just don't know to do it. It's really simple. You just need to go and grab it. They will pay it forward because they, if you work with Google, they're going to give them the best information. Yeah. Their job is to give the best information. The best information. And if you're the best person at what you're doing, you're doing everybody a disservice by not doing that. Yeah. I've had several customers and this is my slowest season right now too. I'm not cut off yet. But I've had several customers hit me up. I think that's amazing. Sure search engine optimization and yep. having that little yep. landing page. Absolutely. It's very critical. That's simple, stuff. but it just has to be done. Yeah. So you guys, that was, um, that is an adventure in ADHD. We talked about everything there. A lot of stuff, right? We talked about some business hacks. We talked about landlords and get rich slow, which we're going to elaborate another time. Everybody tag Robert Brown and ask him to come on the show and give his input on get rich slowly. Cause he's a genius at it. Um, you know, we talked about some AI stuff and some, some fun little business hacks with accident insurance for your businesses. You guys make comments. If you want us to elaborate more, like, again, if you're trying to get, I'm trying to get some of these people to come on the show. We're still really new. This is our fifth or sixth episode today. This is our fifth or sixth. They might, I'm going to be honest. They might not all be uploaded in order. This might be, might the, be the second. Oh, okay. <laughs> the other ones are going to take me a little more editing. They gotcha. Okay. So they are going to come. We're going to have them all scheduled to get draw launched. But, um, yeah. So as we, as you guys, part of why we haven't had different guests on is cause we're changing a lot of stuff and trying to really get our feel and our vibe set up. Um, we actually have two new cameras that are going to be here for Thursday, so it'll be an even different configuration, but I think it's going to be for the better. Um, and so, yeah, so please keep joining us. Please comment, like, follow, subscribe, um, make a comment what you want to hear more about. We can get those people on here and elaborate and get you the information. Um, please, if you have a friend that owns a business, even if they, you think it's a big, huge business that's killing it, please tag them to this video. Um, we want to be able to help all of these people. So you can contact us, um, Dreamline uh, Industry. No, what's our business name? Dreamline Agency. I got to remember that's almost. A it's super easy to find. You just type in Google. Dreamline.agency and you'll pull up to our website. Dreamline.agency and we can show you guys how to grow your business in a great way. Um, guys, thanks for joining. You guys have anything else you want to add? We're going to wrap this thing up, I think. I don't know how long we've been going. Long enough. Nice. That's a pretty decent with 35 minutes of scruff on my computer. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in to the ADHD Express. Um, like I said, you guys, this is going to be a regular thing. So it's not something you have to wonder if we're going to keep doing this. We're scheduled to film twice a week um, and for the foreseeable future. And we just hope to go up from there. So please help us be successful. Like, subscribe, follow, comment. It works. Have a good day.